All right, Jeff, we are live here. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Expect Miracles podcast. Today, we have Dr. Jeff Scott and I. Uh, we both uh, work in Montclair Upper Cervical in West Orange. We are Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractors. And today, we are going over one of my favorite topics. I know Jeff's really passionate about it, too. It's retracing and the healing process. Um, we always have patients ask us, how long does it take to get better under upper cervical care? What does that entail? What am I going to heal through? Mm -hmm. um, and I want to I want to go over those questions today. And I want to also go over the, dis uh, the difference between feeling better and getting better. Um, it's been a while since we did a podcast. If you guys have any questions or comments or topics you want us to cover, please leave them in the comments below. And now we are going to jump into it. Dr. Jeff, how are you today? Doing well. Beautiful Thursday, fall morning. What can Absolutely. you what can, leaves are Leaves are changing. Chris Fair, what more can you ask for in life, right? Let's cut grass, green trees, birds chirping. That's, the, <laughs> that's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> um, so... We are going over retracing. Dr. Jeff, what is retracing and how does it relate to upper cervical chiropractic care? Yeah. So retracing is it's a concept that I didn't hear about until I started diving into the chiropractic world. I think I first heard about it somewhere along the line at school, but I would describe it as it's this chiropractic based concept, this holistic based concept that your body has the ability to continuously go back and heal up past injuries, emotional stress, um, and damage from infection. It has the ability to continuously go through and heal up things. Um, and it's kind of rooted around this idea that the nervous system um, remembers everything. It records, stores, and remembers everything that your body has, has gone through. They've even shown this just with memories in terms of going back and stimulating different areas of the brain and recalling memories from childhood that people long have forgot from their actual conscious mind. It's stored somewhere in your nervous system. Um, so what in terms of upper cervical care, um, what that entails is as we go through and we identify where the interference is in the nervous system, we restore the joints to their proper articulation. We remove that interference and now we've enabled the body to go through and heal. So what that means is as the body is going to go through and start healing, every now and then it's going to have these this almost like cyclical periods where it's going to go through and do, I like to liken it to almost like a backup on a computer. It's going to go through, it's going to try to clear out old files, it's going to try to clear out damaged tissue, um, because most likely what's happened is at some point in time, your body sustains some kind of trauma, whether it was physical trauma, um, mental, emotional trauma or chemical trauma that the body tried to heal as best it possibly could. And for some reason it couldn't, whether it was other misalignments that were there, whether it just didn't have the energy or the capacity to do it. So it healed what it could, it stopped there, and then it got layered somewhere with other traumas that accumulated over time. So as your body's going through and it's going back through, it's going through and rehealing these injuries, these traumas that it wasn't able to overcome or fully heal before. And that's why as people go through and they go through retracing, I know one time, um, I think it was uh, about a year ago, I came to you and I was like, hey, you know what, Kev, last night I felt like my tongue swelled up. And, you know, I was sitting there watching TV and out of nowhere, the back of my tongue just swelled up. I was like, what was that? And then it went away the next morning. And you're like, oh, I went through that. Probably a sign of retracing, probably from, you know, I've had strep throat before, you know, I've had, you know, nasal drip. So could have just been that area of the body going through and, ha and, and healing some of this stuff up. So your body's continuously working through this physiological process of trying to heal itself up. Yeah. And one of the best analogies I've ever heard used was uh, Dr. Forrest out in California. Mm -hmm. When your body goes through a trauma and your body starts to heal, you can think about it like a clock. The body starts to heal around the clock and it gets to about 10 and it stops. And your body never fully healed from that injury. Now, we go through several of those traumas throughout our lifetime. Yeah. And when you get put back into alignment upper cervically, 
rapid healing takes place. And I think retracing happens mostly in the upper cervical world is because the adjustments hold in place. Mm -hmm. Regular chiropractic, they just want to, they just want to crack your neck every time you come in. And I'm not bashing regular chiropractic. It's great. A lot of people heal from it, but the goal of upper cervical is for the adjustment to hold in place. Yeah. When you hold in place, you get complete flow up and down of the nervous system. It stays in place and your body continues to heal without any outside intervention. So the healing process, the retracing is continuous. There's no blockage of nerve flow. So it keeps on healing. Mm -hmm. So all those old injuries you had that stopped around the clock at 10, they start to heal up again and it goes from 10 to 12. And it could be ha something that happened in early childhood, mm -hmm. in adolescent, teen, all the way up to adulthood. We have had several traumas that the body works through. Um, Dr. Jeff mentioned um, I, he, he had strep, uh, strep, got a lot of strep throats as a kid. I had chronic ear infections and strep throat. Same thing happened to me in my healing process. Uh, my tongue and tonsils would swell up. I wouldn't get sick. They would swell up for a day or two while I was getting under upper cervical care, and then it would go away. Um, I used to pull my hip flexors all the time in, ho in hockey. And I remember two or three months into care, I woke up so sore in that area. It felt like I played an entire hockey game mm -hmm. and it was my body healing up my hip flexors that just have never fully healed until I was actually under upper cervical care. Yep. Um, not only is it physical, it's past emotional stress and traumas come up too. um, We've had several patients that unfortunately had a rough upbringing in childhood who were abused and some actually heal through those emotional traumas. Um, I remember uh, when my my dad passed away at 16, um, when I was going under upper cervical care around 23, I think I, cri I cried for like a straight month and it was just me finishing grieving that process. And it sounds so far fetched to think about, but it happens to a lot of people going under upper cervical care so much so that they have mapped it out. We have a great poster in our office that for the first six weeks, rapid healing takes place. Mm -hmm. And it's like the stock market. It goes up and down, up and down as the body heals. You might have a couple days where you feel the best you've ever felt. And then you might wake up a day or two later and some of your old symptoms are back. And it could get a little frustrating because you feel so good, you think you're healed, but then the body starts healing and scanning itself for old memories, injuries, and uh, past emotional stuff, and you start to heal through it. So it could be a little bit of a bumpy roller coaster ride, an uncomfortable process, but it's all for the better because you're finishing that healing process that your body so desperately wanted to do, but mm -hmm. couldn't do because there was so much blockages of the nerve and blood flow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, way to think of any kind of trauma that your body's sustaining. If we, we can boil this down to like almost physics, biophysics like levels and say all trauma is energy of some sort. Mm -hmm. Your body has to deal with that energy and the effect that that energy has on your tissues of some kind, whether it's physical, that's obviously probably the easiest to understand. If it's, you know, mental, emotional, the, the, how your body is dealing with that fight or flight response, how your body is dealing with the strain that comes with being in that anxious, elevated state, how that impacts everything in your body from not just your muscles, your blood vessels, all the way down to the organs and everything like that, your hormone system. And then obviously chemical trauma, that's, a, you know, that energy, that interaction of, you know, free radicals of uh, molecular compounds with your body. That's all a form of energy. So that, your that, body has to deal with that energy and that's what retracing is in it's allowing your body to go through and process through this stuff that it couldn't process through previously. Right. And the chemical toxins, that's a full blown detox too. Yeah. Like your, your cells can be actually start pulling that toxin out and, um, you might get some flu like symptoms, um, but you're not really sick. It's yeah. just your body detoxing something that you went through a long time ago. And we've had um, some patients who have reported almost feeling a, like sick in terms of like, oh, I'm feeling, you know, feeling like in, in just feeling fatigued, feeling like, you know, I, I'm hot and stuff like that. And it, it very, very well is probably a detox, even if yeah. it's just like from food sensitivities. Absolutely. 
And one of the probably the most frequently question we get is, you know, in the consultation, we explain what upper cervical care is. And then the patient obviously asks, well, how long does it take to get better? Yeah. Um, now, that's a loaded question. And every case is differently. It all obviously depends on what your x-rays look like, what your trauma history looks like. Some cases are a lot more severe than others. So every case is unique, but that's what I love about upper cervical because every adjustment is unique to that person. It's not a one adjustment fits all. It is very specific to that person's joint angles and anatomy. And I think that's why we get such good results is because we're being so specific. Yeah. Now, um, I would say um, most people notice a good change two to three days in within the first week um, of care. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of people, you know, especially if you have a lot going on neurologically, um, you can see a lot of brain fog, headaches, dizziness, vertigo that can get better. Mm. Um, now, just because you feel better after the first adjustment does not mean you are healed. I had, I had, I probably had the best first adjustment you could ever have upper cervically. I, I was a mess for five years, brain fog, dizziness, vertigo, hand tremors, uh, migraines, chronic fatigue. I was just a mess, uh, and chronic anxiety and depression. And I remember the, after my first adjustment, when I literally got up off the table, my anxiety and depression, it was the first time I felt that ease in my body for mm -hmm. like five years. Um, my vision was so clear after the adjustment. Um, I had a boost of energy. I felt great. I thought I was healed and oh my God, was I wrong? <laughs> um, it was a great first adjustment, but two or three days later, the healing process started and it kicked my ass. Yep. So the goal is not to get you to feel better. It's to get you better. better yeah. Now you can do a lot of things to feel better. You can go down, you can go to the liquor store down the street and, you know, drink a bottle of your choice and you could feel better for a little bit but it's not getting you better. Yeah. Our goal is to stabilize the spine and get you better. So these symptoms don't continuously keep on creeping back into your life. We want to get after the root cause of the problem and heal. So a lot of people feel great after the first adjustment, but the reason why we're making this podcast is because it usually takes months to heal through serious neurological issues. Yeah. We usually say in our office, the baseline is give it three or four months. Mm -hmm. You can feel great in that time period. But as we were just talking about before, the nervous system remembers everything. And at some point, you are going to start to heal through old traumas, injuries, and past emotional distress. Now, this looks very different for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I do see some people where it's just like a straight shot up. <laughs> they don't, I mean, they, they do really well. We explain retracing to everybody because, you know, most of it, it does happen, but we do have patients who are like, you know what? I didn't really feel sore, tired or anything after my adjustment. They just, they feel really good. Yep. And then you have patients that it, like myself, it's a rough, rocky journey back yep. to health. And, and that's, it's important, you know, that this, uh, us distinguishing that of, feeling better versus being better because, you know, I, I think our society, you know, especially like here on the East coast, I know you've lived on the West coast as well. So you a little bit more familiar with that area than I am, but you know, a lot of our society is very focused on like, I want to just, if I feel better, I am better. And that's mm -hmm. like a lot of times where I think there is that quicker jump to, surgery or something like that and and you think about it because we're so we're so used to this concept of like well if i go in and i get if they fix this that's going to get rid of the pain signal and then i'm going to be better yes you can get rid of the pain signal but you've also caused another trauma to your body and i'm not not saying that surgery is not warranted there is absolutely a time and a place and it gives people depending on what they need it gives people their lives back. But what we're talking about is an entirely different paradigm where it's you're going in and you're saying, okay, what is blocking you from physically healing and expressing your, um, your, your full 
optimal wellness potential that, you know, talking to kind of rough things, what, uh, egg, um, uh, Gigliotti or mm-hmm. Giuliani said, um, when on the one podcast, it's, you're not expressing your full optimal wellness and vitality. Upper cervical care, we're going to go in, we're going to remove that interference that is preventing your nervous system and your body from going through a normal physiological process of healing itself, going in there, restoring it. Then your body has that opportunity. And it's like you have a deck of cards and that deck of cards, you have no idea what cards they are all laying face down. But every time your body goes through this retracing cycle, it's removing these deck of cards, which are representing the traumas and the the um, the things that need to be healed mm-hmm. and every time you're removing this and you're removing this and removing this and it might be different we have some patients that come in for let's say vertigo and you know and what they find is like well the vertigo might still be you know my needle might not move right away but they're like i'm sleeping better like i don't have headaches that neck tension is is gone. Um, my anxiety is better. Your body has its own agenda. And yeah. as much as we, you know, as doctors want to say, oh, this is going to get better right away, as much as, you know, you're coming in with vertigo, tinnitus, maybe even, you know, low back pain, neck pain, your body has its own agenda. You might have had an infection when you were young that caused some damage to the immune system. Your body might go through and heal that first. That mm-hmm. might be its priority because that's, you know, your your nervous system has its own agenda. And that's why giving time, especially, and that's the beauty of upper cervical care is it's this wonderful paradigm of your body has the capacity to heal itself if you give it time. But in that same thing, it's about keeping things in place. You're, it's not like traditional chiropractic care or even physical therapy where it's like, well, that time is going to look like maybe six to eight months and you got to come in two to three times a week to do that. No, it's get the ball rolling. Trust then that the body, as long as we can keep things in alignment and the body will have that chance to do what it does best, which is heal itself up. And that's where, but that's where it's giving that time. And Jeff, you, you know, you've been through that probably more, you've lived that more than, you know, most of our patients, um, Mm -hmm. and as well as, you know, Dr. Hall has been through it. Dr. Lee has been through it. Dr. Haver has been through it. Dr. Hubbard's been through it. That experience of like, you got to just give the body time to do what it does. And that's when, Mm -hmm. that's when the miracles happen is as the body heals. Yeah. And one thing I want to jump into, uh, is how do you know you're retracing and how do you know when you need an adjustment? Um, but before we get into that, um, we had a patient yesterday. He's has upwards of five or six serious neurological issues, and he's been under care for probably about two weeks. And, um, you know, his he came in for vertigo, but under his vertigo, you know, he gets migraines, neck pain, nausea. Um, he's got a list of things that go under that. And so within the first couple of weeks, I asked him, how's your vertigo? And he said, you know, oh, you know, not too much change. I'm still, I'm still really dizzy. And then, so we do our work up. He's holding, and then right before he leaves, he says, "You know what? Um, I used to get migraines like six days out of the week. It's actually down to two right now, mm-hmm. and um, you know, my vision is better." So he's very laser focused on the vertigo because it's his main complaint. It's it's debilitating, and it's kind of stayed the same in the first couple weeks of care. But as Dr. Jeff was saying, with that deck of cards, your body starts to heal through everything. It's got its own agenda. We don't know what it's going to start to heal first. His headaches are down to two times a week rather than six. It's only been a week or two under care. And sometimes it's tough for people to grasp that. That's amazing. You have five or six neurological things going on. Your main complaint is still the same, but your body is healing other things. Mm -hmm. So there are other victories going on, and it's going to keep getting better and better as the weeks and months go on. Um, So which brings us to our next point. How do you know if you're retracing or you're actually in pain and need an adjustment? So upper cervical, um, depending on what office you go to, we use a series of tests to see if you're holding the adjustment. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes in and says, I'm a mess, I'm dizzy, my neck is stiff, I'm tired, I have a headache, 
we necessarily might not need to give them an adjustment. That's mm-hmm. where I feel like some other chiropractic techniques might get in trouble. You have to have objective measures to see if that is actually still holding the alignment. Yeah. So what we do is we do a thermographic neck scan and we measure the inflammation coming out of the neck. Mm-hmm. Most likely with retracing, the scan will look really good or it will look completely different when that person's out of alignment, meaning they they don't need a neck adjustment because they're not in pattern. There's no neurological insult to their scan. And then we do the leg check and their legs are balanced. Uh, Their posture analysis looks good, but they're still having these neurological symptoms. And so what you see is they're holding their adjustment. We do some support work two or three days later. All those things that that person was feeling and complaining about is actually gone Mm -hmm. and it goes away and it starts. It's just that ebb and flow of the um, ebb and flow of the retracing. So it's amazing what you do when you put something back in place and leave it alone and let the body heal. Just because you're not feeling great does not mean you need an adjustment. It mm-hmm. could be your body healing through those old injuries. It's kind of, I think it's, um, I think it's Rob Wolf has a, a quote that says, uh, if you're going through hell, keep going. And yeah. Kind of like sometimes you have to, as much as we don't want you to have to experience that, sometimes that's what healing you have to walk through that that experience and on the other side of it is is something truly truly special i think you know and even for more if we were to hash that out into even more of like an objective thing for patients we usually wind up telling patients like if you've been if you're experiencing an increase in symptoms and it's a day or two um give it time you know you may if usually if it's lasting for five five plus days that now starts to get on the idea of, okay, maybe there is another, you know, segmental level that has shifted out of place. We need to put that back into place. Um, but, you know, at the same time, it's like, if, if not, you know, I, I know after, you know, I get adjusted, it usually takes my body about, I would say four or five days for everything to really kind of, of, of settle. So, and, but once it settles, it, fe- it it's, everything feels much better. And that's where it's being patient. And it's, it's, it t- it's a little bit of educating a different paradigm of like, just because you're experiencing symptoms doesn't necessarily mean something's out. If it's lo- continuing to last. Okay. Um, and a lot of our patients are, are, you know, most of our patients are very good and almost happy when, even if they're experiencing symptoms and you're like, no, you're holding. Yeah. And they're happy. And, about it. and because it's, it's almost like that hope of like my body is doing what it's supposed to do. And it's a different concept than that. than you're normally educated on medically or health wise growing up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I can't tell you how unbelievable it is to not have to get an adjustment every time you're in the office for somebody that went to regular chiropractic care three or four times a week for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, upper cervical was the first thing that was able to put the healing back in my hands where I would get an adjustment and it would hold for months. Mm-hmm. And even if I wasn't feeling great, I knew I wasn't going, it wasn't going to last long. I knew I was going to feel better in a couple of days because my alignment was good. Um, you know, just going, going to a chiropractic office, getting cracked and twisted. Um, you might feel good for an hour or two, a day or two, but usually those things come back and it's not like a, it's almost like a natural painkiller. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it makes you feel good for a little bit, but structurally you want to put everything back in to fix the alignment. So everything falls into place and your body can heal itself, especially even when you're going through those retracing periods. And one thing I'm just going to add on top of that, that I always find really cool, um, you know, as we as we go through is as we're going through and we're seeing you when you objectively see patients retracing when new segments are showing up, because we've mm-hmm. had how many patients I know you went through this, Kev. Um, I just went through this the past two, two weeks, but it's really cool when you're going through, you're checking someone and they have their normal their normal pattern is showing up. And then all of a sudden they come and usually they're feeling a little bit different. They're like, mm-hmm. I just, something just doesn't feel right. And there's a new level that has shown up 
neurologically in their body. And it's like, you get that in place and it's this whole nother level of ramp up. I know you said that happened with your, you were feeling better, feeling better. And then your C3 segment showed up yeah. and you got that adjusted and that just unlocked another level. I know yeah. we just did C3 and C7 on me mm -hmm. and I'm excited to see what that level, uh, what, you know, how that does for the body. And that's where it's really, really cool. If you're as, as doctors seeing that retracing yeah. happening objectively to the nerve and, and neurologically. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up, Jeff. And for patients, this is why we also say give it at least four months um, mm -hmm. because your body heals in layers and we write down every single misalignment on your 3D x-rays, but they don't necessarily show up. They can show up months later. So we adjust what your body tells us what it wants to adjust. And yeah. for the first couple months, it might be C1 or C1, C2. And then your body, your spine starts to heal from the top down. So once that area starts getting taken care of, you might see a C3 show up three or four months down the road, a C5, a C6. Um, other segments do show up and it's it's uh, you can't adjust it until the body is neurologically ready to accept it. Because if you just take somebody's x-rays, you match up their misalignments and then you give them the adjustment of all their misalignments, they're not going to feel great because no. their body wasn't neurologically ready to accept it. So everything we do, we go off your body showing us what it wants to get adjusted. So you have to give it time to rebalance and heal. And sometimes down the road, one of your major adjustments doesn't show up till three, four, five months into care. So that's why one of the main reasons is we we find it usually takes about four months to stabilize the spine. You have to give your upper cervical doctor a chance to find these segments because sometimes your body's not ready to accept one of your major mis misalignments. It, sometimes it shows up down the road. Well, I'm, I'm, we would say probably about a year and a half into care. And that's the first time either of those segments have showed up. Yeah, so, absolutely. And and that happens, my, yeah. like, you just, it's that patience of like your body has the capacity to go through and do wonderful things. So, and that's what the beauty of retracing is. It's, it's this, your body will continue to walk you back to as how as optimal of a level of health as it possibly can. If you just give it the chance. Absolutely. And, um, some people that went through the re the retracing period, like I did, mm -hmm. they, they, like, they asked me like, how long did it take for you to get better? And, um, I was like, you want the honest answer? Because I'm always very honest with my patients because Dr. Drew Hall was very honest with me. I don't mm -hmm. sugarcoat anything. I want to be as upfront as possible. I remember, the first three or four months into care for me were very rocky, up and down. I would have a couple good days, but I had more bad days than good. Keep in mind, I had upwards of 15 neurological symptoms on a daily basis. Your body just doesn't get rid of that. No. So the first three or four months of care were rough. It was a roller coaster. A couple good days, a couple days where I felt like shit and couldn't get out of bed. Yeah. And then I remember around the four-month mark, I started having more good days than bad. I was still having some bad days, but the light at the end of the tunnel was getting bigger. I was having also really good days. And that was very unlike me because I never had a good day in five years. Mm -hmm. And then I remember looking in the mirror around the eight month mark, the eight month mark. And I remember saying, oh, wow, I'm not getting those headaches anymore. My board vision is, is better. My hand tremors are gone. And so it does take a long time. And it took me about a year and a half to be feel completely healed. Yep. Now, when I tell people this, People think I don't have a year and a half. I don't have that time. And that was the same exact response I gave Dr. Drew Hall. But it's not like it's going to suck for yeah. a year and a half. Yeah. You are going to feel marginally better, but you're still going to have those retracing bad days, ups and downs. It's going to ebb and flow, but it gets the light at the end of the tunnel gets bigger and bigger after every month, and you get more hope and you get closer to that finish line of. At first, I felt like my old I felt like my old self was back around eight months. I was like, oh, wow, I'm back. And a year and a half into it, I felt better than I ever did before the injury. Yep. So your body still does really good healing. Three months in, six months in, nine months in, a year in, two years in, you still continue to get better. It really doesn't level off. It just keeps optimizing and getting better. Yep. Yep. And that's and that's important to know. It's a, a, for patients to know, prospective patients to know. It's 
It's if you give it time and time doesn't, like I said, time is not, that's not saying that for that whole time when you were under care with Dr. Dr. Drew, um, that, that you were in there three or four times a week. That's not the goal of upper cervical care. The goal yeah. is to make sure it's in place and let, let it be. Yeah. And so, but that's, it's a, it's a really a testament to like your body mm -hmm. has that opportunity and that, that capacity and internal power to Absolutely. go through and, and heal. Absolutely. Because, and, and it's a different paradigm. It's a different you know, way of thinking than our, our normal medical upbringing. Um, but it, it's, it's absolutely hundred percent can change lives and that's where lives get changed. And a lot of people see our TikTok videos, mm -hmm. our, our Instagram videos, and they see one adjustment and they think that's all it takes. And mm -hmm. while one adjustment, uh, can last and hold for months to years, the true healing takes place over time yeah so it's very everybody knows instagram TikTok. it's not reality yeah. um i try to make it a point when i interview my patients that are feeling really good how long have you been under care and some of them say a year a year and a half six months very rare we, jeff we don't we don't interview anybody that's been under care for one week we really don't have you any, feeling. we don't have Even, any hit wonders no well so we do and so, but it's the first week. Yeah. The first week. Yeah. They're not, they're not here. Like some people, no. some people come back and they are like, my life is changed. This is awesome. It's, and we're like, it's been one week. We are so happy for you, but you, you still got you a got, lot of ways yeah. to go here. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we never, we never ask people to give a testimony a week into care, two weeks into care. We want them to stabilize, heal, and uh, we usually wait like four, six, eight year, uh, a year into care to give that testimony. And you see a lot of big changes and like permanent healing take place, not just not just covering things with Band-Aids. And that's, I think, to the to the the point that really needs to be underlined. It's permanent healing. It's yeah. not. And we're we're not about we want symptoms to get better, but we know to keep symptoms better and to keep that presence and the persistence of those symptoms from coming back, you need to give the body that you need all those structures. You know, we've talked about it. Structure can drive function. And if you've got, you're not, we are not only optimizing the nervous system, you're allowing the joints, the joint capsules, everything that holds those joints in together, the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments, the connective tissue, the fascia, all these very complex interconnected systems are going to heal along the way as well. Mm -hmm. As that nervous system gets optimized, as that coordination um, and the function begins to get better, these things are going to heal. That's going to help from a structural standpoint, keep everything in place as well. And that just, it, it's a, a feedback loop. It just keeps building and building on top of itself. Absolutely. So everybody, today we went over retracing back to health, what retracing is and how it relates to upper cervical care. Uh, Dr. Jeff and I love doing these videos for you guys. This was one topic that uh, we've got several requests about, and I'm happy we got it done and recorded. If you have any other topics you want us to cover, uh, we're going to try to do these as often as possible. Leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching, subscribing, uh, looking at our videos and supporting us. It means the world. And um, we will hopefully see you next week. And uh, everybody have a great week. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday.